AI tools like ChatGPT are an extraordinary resource for streamlining your everyday work. But if you're still entering your prompts directly into ChatGPT, you're missing out on some huge time savings. AI becomes even faster and more convenient when you start automating all of your commonly used prompts. Today, I'm going to show you how to automate your OpenAI prompts using Make, formerly known as Integromat. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use automation and AI tools every day to help knowledge workers create more time. If you'd like to see more tips about AI and automation every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn those notifications on too. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start automating your OpenAI prompts in Make using a simple example that summarizes emails in your Gmail inbox. Once you learn how the OpenAI module works in Make, you'll be able to connect any other app you'd like. So let's get started. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need accounts on Make and OpenAI. Note that sending requests to the OpenAI API will incur a small charge. You can see all the details on the API pricing page linked in the resources board down below, but we're talking about charges of a few cents per request or less. Additionally, every OpenAI account includes a $5 credit for API usage. If you've already used up your complimentary $5, log into the OpenAI API portal, go to Billing Overview, and add a payment method. There's no set monthly fee to use the API. Instead, you'll just be charged for your usage each month. You'll also need a free Gmail account if you don't already have one. Here's the full automation we'll be building today. Whenever we add the summarize label to an email in Gmail, the automation sends the contents of the email to OpenAI and requests a summary. Then that summary is emailed back to us. This scenario we're working with in this video is just an example to help you get started. As we go, I'll explain the general purpose of each step so you can switch out specific apps with different software or add additional actions to your scenario if you want. However, if this is your first time working with OpenAI and Make, you'll probably want to follow along step-by-step -step to get familiar with all the options. First, you'll need to open up Make and create a new scenario. The first element of any automated scenario is the trigger. The trigger determines when the automation will actually run. When you make a new trigger for your AI automation, you'll need to consider when you want to run your prompt and what app you want to get data from when you build your prompt. These choices will determine which app you use for your trigger and which specific event you use. For our example, we want to run our prompt whenever we get a new email in Gmail with the summarize label. That means we'll be using a watch emails trigger in Gmail but first, we need to create the summarize label in Gmail and apply it to a message so we have some test data to work with. Go to Gmail and open up an email to summarize. Here's a long email we can use as a test. Click on the tag icon at the top of the email, create a new summarize label and add it to this message. Now our test data is all set. Let's go back to our scenario builder in Make. We'll select Gmail as the app we want to use for the trigger and we'll choose watch emails as the event. Choose your Gmail account or add a new connection if you haven't connected Gmail to make already. Now we can start configuring the trigger. We don't want the automation to run for every new email, just the emails that have our summarize label. Gmail creates folders for your custom labels, so we can choose the corresponding folder by clicking on this click here to choose folder button. I'll select the summarize folder from the list that appears, this will ensure that the automation only processes emails that are in the summarize folder. As you're configuring your trigger, make sure that your settings are as specific as possible to avoid having your automation run when you don't want it to. Next, Make gives us the option to set the filter type. We could change this to Gmail filter if we wanted to enter a query and further limit the emails that Make watches for. We'll leave it as a simple filter. Limiting the trigger to the summarize folder is enough for this automation. In the criteria dropdown, you can choose whether the trigger runs for all emails, unread messages only, or read messages only. We'll choose all. Finally, we can set the max number of results. As Make notes in this warning message, setting this number too high could cause apps to time out as they wait for Make to process several results. For the sake of easy testing, we'll go with a limit of one. The trigger is fully configured. We can click on OK to close this window. Now, we need to test the trigger. Right click on the module and select choose where to start. Click select the first email, then choose an email from the list. You should see every email from your inbox with a summarized label, which may only be one email if you've just created the label now. Click OK to confirm your selection and close this window. 
Then click Run once in the bottom left to run your trigger module. You should now see a number over your trigger module indicating how many bundles of data, or how many emails, it retrieved. Click on the number to see more info about the data, and confirm that the trigger processed the right email. If everything looks good, we can start adding automated actions to our scenario. With this Gmail trigger module in place, we have all the data we need for our example scenario. To build our prompt, we just need the email and some other directions that will enter directly into the OpenAI module. However, if you need any additional data to inform your prompt, you can add additional search modules for other applications to incorporate that data now, before the OpenAI module. For example, you may want to look up more information about the email's sender in your CRM or in an Airtable database. Just add a new module, choose the app you want to search in, and select an appropriate search action to find the data you want to include in your prompt. However, since we have all of the data we need for our example, we'll continue on and add the OpenAI prompt. Search for OpenAI. For the action, we'll need to choose Create a Completion. This action will allow the scenario to send a prompt to OpenAI and get the AI's response. Choose your OpenAI account or connect a new one to make. Just as a reminder, you will need to have a payment method on file to use OpenAI's API, and each request, including the tests in make, will incur a small charge. Alternatively, you may still have a $5 API credit from opening a new OpenAI account. Based on OpenAI's current pricing, each request in this scenario should only incur a charge of a few cents or less if you're using all the same settings that we do. Once you've chosen your account, you can start configuring the module. First, you'll need to choose the language model you want OpenAI to use. Different modules have different pricing, different speeds, different amounts of context they can use, and other unique aspects to consider. You can learn more about the details of each model in OpenAI's API docs, which are linked in the resources board in the description of this video. For this tutorial, we'll use GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. This model charges very low rates and features a high amount of context, so it's good for building and testing and automation summarizing long text. GPT-4 is generally a better model, of course, but it's also about 10 times more expensive. So we'll stick with GPT-3.5 Turbo for now. Next, we can tell the AI how to behave and give it a prompt to complete. Click on Add Item under Messages. Our first item will be a system message that instructs the AI how it should behave in general. This is not strictly necessary, but if you don't provide a system message, the AI will default to the identity of a helpful assistant. If you'd like to be more specific in style or tone, you can define it with a system message first. Choose System as the role. In the Message Content field, describe how the AI should respond to requests and what identity it should assume. For instance, we'll say, You are a sassy assistant. You respond accurately and helpfully to requests, but your tone is sarcastic, flippant, and playful. No harm in giving our AI answers a little more personality. After the optional system message, you provide your specific prompt. Add another item. Set the role drop down to user. In other words, we want the message to take the role of a user entering a prompt into ChatGPT. In message content, you can enter your full prompt. Be sure to include data from your trigger or optional searches as applicable. I'll enter a prompt asking to summarize an email. Then I'll provide key pieces of data from the email that triggered the automation. The subject line, the sender name and email, and the body, which is called text content in Make. If you click on Show Advanced Settings, you'll see a few options for configuring your OpenAI prompt. Here, you can limit the length of the responses by defining a maximum number of tokens that it should use. Note that 1,000 tokens are equivalent to about 750 words, and this value defaults to 16,000 tokens, or about 12,000 words. With temperature and top P, you can set how creative the AI will be with its answers on a scale of 0 to 1. A lower number in either of these settings will result in a more factual and less creative answer. They both default to 1, so you may want to lower these to around 0.7 if you want to get somewhat more accurate answers. Just note that even if you set these to 0, there's never a guarantee that AI will be 100% accurate. 
Hallucinations, or the AI just making things up, is always a risk with this tech. In the number field, we can determine how many answers the AI will provide to our response. This defaults to one, but we can raise this number if you want to make multiple attempts. With echo, you can choose whether or not the AI will echo back the prompt that you entered in at the start of its response. We'll choose no here to save some money on tokens. Finally, you can add an additional custom parameter if you'd like. This is a bit more advanced and won't be necessary for most prompts. Once your message is ready, click OK and test the full scenario. Just as a reminder, testing will consume operations in your Make account and will incur a small charge from OpenAI's API. We'll repeat the same testing process as before. Right click on the trigger, select choose where to start, and click select the first email. Pick your email, click OK, then click Run Once. You should see a number over your OpenAI module. Click on it to see the message that OpenAI generated in response to your prompt. You'll have to dig in a couple of menus first. You can find the output under Choices, One, and Message. And here's the response we got. Definitely a bit of sass, just like we asked for, but still a pretty good summary. The completion action has correctly generated a response to our prompt. Now we can send that message anywhere we'd like. We can put it in a Slack message, save it to an Airtable database, or even a Google Sheet, or add it to a Notion page, whatever you want. For our example, we want to email the AI's output back to the original recipient of the summarized email. So we'll add a new module and search for Gmail. Then we'll choose send an email as the action. In the to field, we'll just add our own email address. For the subject line, we'll say something like, your AI summary of original email subject line. And I'll use data from the trigger to dynamically generate the correct subject line from the original email. Finally, we can compose a message. Here is your AI generated summary of the subject email. I'll replace subject with the actual subject retrieved in the trigger. Then after this brief message, I'll add the AI's output. You can find that under Choices, Message, Content. Once you've finished configuring the module, click OK to close it. Test one more time, again using the same manual process as before. Now, when I check my inbox, I can see the message complete with our sassy AI summary. Everything looks good, so I'll go back to make, save the automation, and turn it on so I can start using it. For many of us, AI is becoming an integral part of our daily workflows. Like any other app we rely on every day, automation can make our workflows faster, more consistent, and more reliable. Build on this quick example that we've shown you today and explore what you can do when you combine tools like Make and ChatGPT. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, don't forget, keep the flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation, and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.